And could you also tell us something about the new concept of maybe using beta blockers in patients with asthma or COPD? Well, this is a very controversial area, which I think is very interesting because it may have therapeutic implications. But there is a symposium which is discussing the issue of beta blockers as a therapy for COPD and asthma, which may shock many people because we were always taught that beta blockers are very bad for asthma and COPD. And you may remember for heart failure, beta blockers used to be contraindicated and then it was discovered they were actually beneficial. And now they're the treatment of choice for heart failure. So you can see how things totally changed. And I think the same thing may be happening in airway disease. Uh, in COPD, we now know that beta blockers are not dangerous as in asthma, so people don't get worse with beta blockers. But more than that, they seem to provide some benefit, and there are observational studies, not controlled trials yet, that have shown beta blockers seem to reduce exacerbations and mortality. So there may be some beneficial effect on the disease. I think even more surprising is that they could be beneficial in asthma. Uh, we know that beta blockers make asthma worse and so we always avoid them. But now there are some animal studies looking at beta blockers showing that they actually have surprising anti-inflammatory effects. And the thinking is that endogenous beta agonists may be stimulating the beta receptors to activate an inflammatory pathway and so that the beta agonist is pro-inflammatory. So by giving a beta blocker you block that effect um, and lead to these anti-inflammatory effects. Obviously people were very cautious about looking at this in asthmatics because they get worse but there are some pilot studies where they've gradually increased the dose of beta blocker and they have shown a small initial reduction in lung function but then after two or three doses uh, the patients show an improvement in airway hyperresponsiveness. So it may be that beta blockers have some beneficial effects and I think we, we, we don't want to promote their use in asthma but it, it does indicate that more research is needed to understand how they might be beneficial because that might lead to some new therapeutic approach. So at this point you're not recommending GPs to put their medication? No, absolutely not. But we don't see a contraindication to beta blockers in COPD. Right. But we should be very cautious about beta blockers in treating asthma patients. Could you tell us something about the completely different uh, therapeutic concept, the thermo uh, bronchial thermoplasty? Bronchothermoplasty is a completely new approach to asthma because it's a, it, it, it's a mechanical approach. And the idea is that, that a probe is put down a bronchoscope into the airways and it gives a sort of flash heating of the airway which selectively destroys airway smooth muscle. I don't quite understand how it's so specific, but a lot of animal studies have shown that it is. So the idea is that if you had someone with severe asthma that's not well controlled on treatment, you might be able to improve lung function by burning away the airway smooth muscle. And there are studies presented at this meeting showing that even these patients with severe asthma can show improved lung function with this mechanical procedure. And it seems to be relatively safe. Um, obviously, there's some concern that you might get an edematous reaction, an acute inflammatory reaction, but that doesn't seem to be a big problem. And it seems to have quite long-lasting effects. So it's a very interesting new approach, but I suspect it will be only applicable to very selected patients in the future. Is it very unpleasant? Well, I, it's done under local anaesthetic, so it's, it, it's not without some discomfort as a bronchoscopy, but it's basically a bronchoscopy. They don't, they don't feel any pain during the procedure, other than having a, a bronchoscope in their airways, which is uncomfortable. But it's done under local anaesthetic, so patients don't mind it too much. And, and, and the other thing that 
maybe have, has to be said about it is that it's necessary to treat people several times. So you have to do different airways on each occasion. So it's not like a magic one-off treatment that cures asthma. And but it has some potential. No, it's not approved yet. So, so the trials are still ongoing because obviously you know, the, the, the major concern is the long-term safety of this type of approach and whether you might get scarring of the airways. But so far, it looks promising. Professor Barnes, I know you have to rush off to book signing. Could you tell us briefly about your book? Well, w this is the second of edition of a, a book um, called Asthma and COPD, which I think is the only book that covers both diseases in depth. And so many of the chapters are talking about issues, for example, beta agonists, how they use in asthma and COPD. So it's a very comprehensive book on airway disease. And a lot of the leading world authorities in asthma and COPD are writing chapters. So the last edition, uh, the first edition, was a bestseller. So we're hoping the second edition is going to be even better because we now have color illustrations and there is going to be a, a sort of web-based version of it as well. So I, I hope it will be a useful book for people. Thank you very much.